how to identify early signs of health issues in dogs and cats. Over to Charan who is at the clinic with Dr. Nilima. Now let's go for the next question here. Uh, I think this is very important. Uh, what are some of the early signs to detect that my dog has a cancer? So uh, we thought about lumps, which you said it could be a cancer or yes. something like that. Yeah. So what are the other stages? Because most of the time the pets are at home, so they are not much outside uh, of the house. So how do you think they can get cancer at home? Uh, if you can help me out with that. That's my question, how they get, uh, but the other one is about what the uh, viewer asked. So regarding the first question, how can my dog get cancer? The answer is, cancer always happens when there is a chronic inflammation in the body and uh, the cause of inflammation can be stress, can be diet related, like they are getting too much of processed grains or carbohydrates or it could be a disease which is causing stress and the cells are growing. Cancer is nothing but abnormal growth of cells anywhere in the body. So, I hope I answered the first yeah, yeah, absolutely, question. Absolutely, absolutely. And regarding what are the signs I should look out for if uh, my dog is having cancer. First is, if your dog is having some mass on the body, like the lumps and bumps, which is growing progressively, then you should be worried. And if there is a wound which is not healing at all, mm -hmm. the chronic wound. And if your dog is having persistent lameness, that means it is limping constantly, no matter what you did. And uh, there is a weight loss, sudden weight loss, and you are giving same amount of food, but there is sudden weight loss. And we also have to look out for other signs like loss of appetite, bleeding and discharges. It can be vomiting and diarrhea for a very long period of time and uh, some of them will not like to exercise, they will be reluctant to move or they will have very low energy level throughout the day or difficulty in swallowing or eating. This could be a sign of anything which is growing inside the neck or in the mouth. They will be having difficulty in passing urine or motion and uh, some of them will have um, excess of uh, egg aggressiveness like uh, they will become suddenly too vocal they'll be crying and all those things so this can happen when they have something like a tumor in the brain and all so they will have these signs like crying a lot in the night not sleeping all these things are the signs which you can look out for uh, in a dog which is suffering with cancer uh, and uh, doctor you were just mentioning about the uh, urine so I just got a question I mean uh, uh, does they have any issues with the uh, urinary bladders and all? I think they're, it's one of the most important questions um, I think uh, people ask. Yeah. So. Yes, dogs uh, dogs and cats, they will have urinary tract infection, which we also call UTIs. And compared to cats, dogs will have more. And in dogs also, female dogs will have more UTIs. And uh, the symptoms which you can look out for is suddenly they will start passing urine in the house or they will be having difficulty in passing urine, straining while urination. You will also see blood in the urine or you will see that they will be making a frequent attempt to urinate but they will be not able to pass urine okay. and they will be licking the area of the urinary openings. In some dogs if it becomes serious they will also show signs like vomiting and they will lose their appetite and suddenly become lethargic. Okay, so m m most commonly we do see the dogs licking that area. Yeah. So, is it every time we are supposed to, is it a, sometimes I, we feel that it's common, so where is that uh, point, yeah, yeah, the difference? So, if they are licking once in a while and they don't have the symptoms like difficulty in passing urine or straining while urination or blood in the urine, then it's a part of their routine, hygiene. But if you see that constantly licking their urinary openings and they are unable to pass urine or straining while urinating, okay. then I think you should worry that it may be having UTI or urinary tract infection. So guys, I request you whenever you're taking them for a walk, uh, for a stool or a urine, so please ensure that you check. Don't uh, use your phone nowadays. I do see people having one phone just talking and they're not even concentrating what the dog is doing over there. So please ensure that you know you concentrate on what they are doing 
on the road, so which is uh, again helpful for you to ensure that the dogs uh, are not getting any kind of infections. I, I just want to add something yeah. to this. If you have a dog who is having a chronic UTI and uh, you want to make sure or prevent this UTI, the simple thing which you can do is check the pH, that is the acidic level of the urine of the dog. You can get pH papers, which are, these are easily available. Early morning urine, before feeding, you should check it and it should be between 6 to 6.5, which is normal. That, there's a kind of a paper. Yeah, which so there shows? is a litmus paper. Oh, yeah, litmus you can paper. Okay. Dip in the urine and it will just give the color ah, and yes. also the range of pH. Oh. So that you can know. Whenever you see that the pH is going above or below this range, then you, can, you should be worried. And other thing which you can do is uh, cranberry extract. This extract has shown that it is reducing or preventing the bacterial UTIs in dogs and cats. So you can always add this into your dogs or cats diet if your cat or dog are prone to UTIs. So the Canberra extracts if you want you can get it from any juice center I guess. Yeah you can get it but I would advise you to get it from a veterinarian because that is more safe. Okay so Canberra extracts from the veterinarian okay so I think that answers the question about the uh, issue with the uh, urinary stuff. So uh, we have, uh, I have missed one question in between when uh, I, I'm getting all the questions one after the other here. So it says, my dog, uh, okay, I think we have missed that, it just gone. I'm sorry guys if I have missed any questions. So let me just go with the uh, second, uh, the next question. What are some of the early signs to detect my dog has cancer again? I think that this we have already mentioned, yeah. so we got this question again. I'm sorry. So let's go with the other one. What are some signs that my cat is sick? I think we already spoke yeah, about spoke. it. Uh, yeah. So guys, uh, would like to have uh, if you wanted to know about this, please look at the first part of the same question in the same episode you'll hear the answer so we already mentioned about it so uh, the next question is is my dog in pain how to detect that yeah. so yeah this is a very good question many of us we don't know whether my dog is really in pain or not and the signs which you can see first of all uh, pain can happen in any age and uh, if it is happening in old age like uh, very old dogs who are more than seven years of age and old cats, okay. then it is mostly due to arthritis or spondylosis, just like us. The pain means what kind of a pain? Signs, uh, what you can see is, first thing is, they will not like to mobilize or move around much. Mm -hmm. They will be reluctant to walk stairs. Like before they were walking nicely, but now they are reluctant to go on stairs or okay. they are reluctant to climb on sofas or chairs or they are reluctant to climb on their favorite chair. They have some okay. favorite chairs, yes, yes. favorite bed. Okay. So they won't be liking to jump on them. And they will be having difficulty to get up after a long rest. So Especially you mean mostly the legs? Mostly the legs, legs and also the back. Okay. Back or neck pain also if they have. They will oh. not be liking to move around. And if you touch those areas, uh, they will be either they trying try to, to bite you. Bite us, yes. I or, uh, or shout at us. Yeah, they'll be crying. So those two things you can see. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you take them for a long walk, they will be reluctant to walk such a long walk and they'll be just sitting on one place like indirectly telling me that okay. I can't do or I can't walk so much. So even if they have to go potty and uh, urine, they do their itself, I guess, because yeah. they're not moving anywhere. Yeah. So if, it is, if they feel that this is too painful, then they won't be going out of the house and passing stool and okay. urine so they may be doing it in the same place if the pain is very high okay so guys uh, here clearly i like to rephrase that in case if the dogs uh, have pain they're not going to tell you they're going to show you the symptoms by not walking much because it could be the four legs or two legs or the back pain or the neck pain so uh, just concentrate don't think that they're just trying to rest Concentrate in case if they have some kind of uh, symptoms like this for at least one two hours. Uh, I can say. Yeah. 
just uh, uh, there's the early signs, so please contact your veterinarian there. And so let's pass on to the next uh, question, doctor. Here it got stuck. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> this is a common question. This should have been come uh, first. It says, uh, what is your advice regarding a regular health checkups for senior old dogs and cats? So, what is that uh, regular health checkup? Before that, I uh, would like to ask, is a senior, what is senior and old dogs, what is the age which comes to the senior and what is the age which is, uh, we call in our own terms like teenagers and yeah. all stuff. Yeah. Is there any age particular there? Could you definitely, help me? Yeah. definitely there's an age. So any dog which is below two years is always called a uh, growing dog. Okay. And any dog which is less than one year, we call them puppy only. Okay. And dogs which are between two to seven years of age are called adult dogs. And dogs and cats more than seven years of age are called old dogs or geriatric dogs. Guys, remember this. I'm going to repeat the same thing to everyone. We're uh, going to have the same dialogue. Uh, repeated over you know, again and again. So, uh, so now let's go to the question. So, when do you think we have to take them to the regular checkup? Okay. So, for for all the dogs who are more than seven years of age and all the cats who are more than seven years of age, I usually advise that you should take uh, it to your veterinarian at least twice in a year, so that he can perform all the tests including the blood test, urine test, some x-rays and sometimes either uh, scans are also required mm -hmm. and he can have a thorough physical examination of your dogs and cats so that he can um, tell you or guide you or he can, he, he can even detect the early signs of diseases if you take uh, every six months. That's okay. what I will advise. Every six months? Every six months, oh, okay. complete health checkup. Yeah, so every six months, complete health checkup. Uh, I think uh, it doesn't matter, it could be uh, age limit there, right? It could, it, uh, age okay related I... diseases uh, are like uh, arthritis is age related diseases, but there are some diseases which are not always age related, like we can detect kidney diseases okay. early on in cats if they can come for regular checkups and okay. we can take measures to prevent further damage to the kidneys and also in uh, case of tumors, if okay. you have a dog who is having cancer and uh, we have detected at the early stage, we can prevent the spread of the cancer by surgically removing it. Or uh, these days we have some chemicals or chemotherapy, what we call. So we can give a drug to them and reduce the size of the tumor. Uh, doctor, I just have a quick question. Uh, now, normally uh, we take the pets to a veterinarian every, as you mentioned, you know, every six months on a regular checkup and they have kind of medications and all stuff which we use as per to the doctor there. Yeah. Is there, will, will there be any problem in case if we uh, go to some other doctor, is, you know, some other doctor gives you know, uh, you know, some other medicines and all stuff. So most of the people might be confused, you know, do I have to go to the same doctor again or which is better? So what do you advise, I mean? So, if you are changing your veterinarian uh, because you have shifted to a new place, then you should make sure you mention all the history mm -hmm. of your dog, what it has uh, suffered or what is the vaccinations or everything. And then if your new veterinarian takes, uh, uh, like gives you advice based on that, then I think you should not worry. Okay. But if uh, your he has totally changed the prescription without even asking you what is wrong with your dog. Okay. And, um, or he has given a medication which your dog is not liking or it's allergic. Okay. Then I think you should reconsider. Okay. So guys, uh, we're just not trying to, you know, uh, <laughs> divert you from any other doctors. So please ensure that whenever you're going to a new veterinarian, ensure that the doctor asks the complete uh, history of the dog okay so only you can believe in that kind of a doctor who understands the whole history and then help uh, coming out with the prescriptions if they ask you to change they you might have to go for the changes depending on the uh, the health issues I mean whatever the, at that time at the present situation all right so let's go with a uh, couple of I think we have only two questions left here 
uh, what are the signs I should look out for oral and dental diseases? I mean, first of all, we can't brush them. You know, they won't let. So how do you think we can help them out with this kind of a diseases? So uh, first is, Oral and dental diseases are very, very common these days. As early as three-year-old dogs are getting oral and dental diseases. Mm. And the uh, cause of it could be mostly because they are getting a diet which is not causing the natural wear and tear of their uh, teeth. Because okay. in the naturally they are supposed to eat raw meat and bones. Okay. So these will actually clean their teeth automatically oh. but now if they are shifted to a diet which uh, doesn't involve a lot of chewing then they will get this um, oral and dental diseases mm -hmm. what we have to look out for in oral and dental diseases are bad smell from the mouth if you are seeing bad smell from the mouth and if you see gums mm -hmm. they should be pink in color if you see the gums becoming red and there is blood coming from there mm -hmm. if you see some tooth uh, which are loose they are moving and if you see the change in the color of the teeth, teeth should be white to pale, uh, creamish color. Oh, but yeah. if you see that uh, there is a lot of plaque and tartar, tartar development, that means there is total change in the color of the surface of the teeth, okay. then this can be a serious condition because there is a lot of bad oral bacteria which is growing in your dog's mouth. Okay. And research, uh, sorry, uh, research has shown that this bacteria can even cause heart diseases. Oh. So, doctor, I have seen a uh, couple of dogs having on, on the gums, they have black dots kind of thing. Okay. Is that a disease or just uh, the normal stuff? So, if if they have occurred uh, uh, like in the old age okay. and they are not uh, just changing okay. in the, uh, like the quantity, okay. you should not worry. Ah. But if like uh, it's growing constantly or it's becoming a mass, okay. then I think you should worry because Oral cancers are also very common in dogs. Uh, you just mentioned that you know the the meat what they eat normally cleans uh, uh, you know, the teeth. The teeth. Is there any other way that we can clean them? Yeah, definitely. There are a lot of ways to clean. First thing is when they are puppy or early on in their uh, life, you should start brushing their teeth. Okay. So you should start doing that every day or at least several times a week. Second thing is you can give chew sticks. These are uh, um, medically prepared sticks which will uh, automatically clean your dog's ear. So at least one or two chew sticks every day. And most of the dogs, after even after following a perfect healthy oral care regimen, mm -hmm. they will always need a professional dental cleaning. Okay. So these two, when you combine, then your dog will have a good oral health. All right, excellent. Thank you so much for that. So I think let's go with the last question for today. Can dog have a heart disease? Oh, I think you're almost uh, about to say that. Uh, can our dogs have a heart disease? And what are the signs I should look out for? You know, for the humans, we can say, oh, I have a heart pain. But how about the dogs? So yes, dogs can have heart disease. In fact, uh, heart disease are second most common cause of death in dogs and it is one of the most common cause of sudden death in cats. So heart diseases can be uh, seen in any age. So these are two types, one is hereditary, that is they are seen early on in the, in the life of the dogs and some are acquired. That means uh, throughout the life they will slowly develop these diseases, that is they can be degenerative or uh, yeah. there will be increase in the size of the heart, all those things. So the signs which we should look out for in a dog is first is they will have exercise intolerance. They will not be uh, walking as they used to be. Mm -hmm. And they will be most of the time having low energy level like lethargic. Mm -hmm. Some of them will also have coughing, especially in the night. And, uh, oh yeah, I can hear the uh, yeah, uh, yeah, thing, yeah. Okay. They will be yeah. having that. And uh, some of them will have weight loss, sudden weight loss will be there. And all these signs, uh, whenever you see, and then I, I think you should go to the veterinarian and uh, let him check your dog thoroughly okay. so that he can perform some tests and uh, find out the heart disease earlier. Okay. I also advise if, if your dog is having a heart disease, then you should add some amino acids like uh, taurine and uh, carnitine. These are good amino acids which will support the heart cell okay. along with the medication which your doctor has advised. Perfect. So, uh, 
guys uh, these are the couple of important topics which we covered and these questions were given by the viewers and i hope the answers are uh, accurate and just in case if you have missed out the answers and uh, uh, you can just go to the descriptions you have the link there where you can find all the questions and answers and any additional questions which we missed please do uh, comment uh, in our uh, comment box and we'll get back to you on the next episode and also if any emergency questions if you have feel free to uh, email us at info at victorentertainments.com which is given in the description again so we can get back to you over the phone you can just leave a call and we have a doctor who can call you back and uh, help you out with the uh, the answers just in case all right thank you so much and thank you so much doctor and uh, until then just uh, stay tuned and do subscribe if you haven't for the next episode bye thanks charan and thanks dr nilima for sharing your valuable insights we have been receiving an overwhelming response from all the pet lovers thank you so much for your support and love please share this video with your friends who are pet owners as this is a very important topic let us try to share it as much as possible and again as usual don't forget to hit the like button subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we post a new video so see you soon till then keep smiling with love juhi bye bye